this 5 jailbreak news update there's been a lot of things happening in the ps4 and ps5 scene i've got lots of topics to dive into here in this video so let's not waste any time here and get straight into it so starting with the new system software releases from playstation we've got 13.02 released on the ps4 specifically saying that they've made some security fixes to the system software and also we have version 12.02 on the ps5 also saying the same thing so these appear to be strictly security patches that were released which is interesting how it wasn't very long since we just got 12.00 on the ps5 and 13.0 on the ps4 and yet we already have another update beyond that with specific security fixes applied when the previous versions especially 13.00 on the ps4 already had a bunch of security fixes that were discovered uh, in that version so whatever this is it seems that playstation has rushed out a fix so it must be something pretty serious for them to have rushed this update out so quickly after the previous ones with it just being for security fixes added now there was a hacker one bug bounty report from five days ago that resulted in a ten thousand dollar bounty which is often kernel vulnerabilities that tend to get bounties of ten thousand dollars or more although sometimes it can be lesser exploits but most of the time it tends to be a kernel exploit although it's not reported from the flow so i don't really expect it to get disclosed if it does that'll be great but i wouldn't you know get my hopes up on it getting disclosed if it's not been reported by the flow but this was five days ago so it's probably not related to the 13.02 or 12.02 update this report was likely patched back in 13.00 in the ps4 or 12.00 if it pertains to ps5 because generally the update is released before the report is resolved the report is only resolved once the update is out and it has been confirmed to patch the vulnerability that was reported so this report likely pertains to something patched in the previous updates and not 13.02 or 12.02 but if we do see a new hacker one report appear here in the next week or so that is ten thousand dollars or more then that will likely pertain to this new patch that was released for the ps4 and ps5 but we'll have to wait and see if we do actually end up seeing another report appear here now zeko also put out a post saying that there's a patch in kernel in pfs read directory a buffer overflow patch so you can see there's no proper length checking on the original version and then the updated version has proper bounds checking added it says here the exploit directory entry claims a file name is 500 bytes but the buffer only has 255 bytes so if you write more than 255 bytes it's going to overflow and you can see there it says it causes a kernel stack slash heap corruption so what zeko says about this is that it's a kernel bug that leads to a kernel exploit patched in 13.00 but it exists in 12.52 and below and at least 7.61 kernel that I can see. So the idea is that if this vulnerability can be triggered on the PS4 up to 12.52 and if it can be turned into a working kernel exploit then it could be used to jailbreak the PS4 up to firmware 12.52 although there's not really any information on this yet so obviously take things with a grain of salt for now because this is all the information we really have on this at the moment. And we don't really know how viable this is to actually get this running on the PS4 yet, or if it has any viability for PS5. Now, beyond that, in terms of user land exploits, we've seen something new happening here from Gejine, the developer of the Blu-ray and Lua exploits. So it looks like Gejine is trying to find a new user land exploit that can be triggered without requiring a disk drive for digital edition consoles or PS5s that do not have their disk drive paired. So the initial post here says, yeah, there's something funny happening at YouTube app on 6.02 non-activated PS5 retail YouTube package. Apparently it should work on every firmware as loading arbitrary HTML is exploiting the engine itself and loads from local. The only problem is HTML is loaded only for two seconds. So need to get a user land control in two seconds. So in the video, we can see the YouTube app being loaded and then it shows a hello world message before the PlayStation sign-in screen. So the idea is to use these media applications which have their own browsers built in that are custom and are not related to the web kit that is used on the PS4 and PS5 primarily for the normal built-in web browser. So these have their own custom browsers that are likely more vulnerable to different exploits. So if we could trigger an exploit in one of these browsers, then we could potentially use that to trigger a kernel exploit and jailbreak the console without needing, you know, a Blu-ray or a save file so that digital edition consoles would also be able to use this to jailbreak their consoles. That is the general idea. Now, the problem as outlined here is that the HTML that's loaded here 
is only loaded for two seconds before the sign-in screen appears. So you need to initialize the exploit completely before the sign-in screen appears within that two seconds, which would be pretty tricky. Now the PlayStation sign-in is not actually important. You don't have to bypass the sign-in. Actually accessing the YouTube app is not part of this vulnerability. It's what happens when the application is actually being loaded before the sign-in screen appears. That's where the exploitation would happen. If the Gedgine was able to trigger a user land exploit within that limited short period of time. But then there's also other media apps that could also be investigated that might allow for more time here. But certainly keep your fingers crossed, especially if you're somebody who has a digital edition console or a console without a paired disk drive. It looks like Gejinet is trying to find a user land exploit that you guys will be able to take advantage of to be able to use to jailbreak your PS5. Not really seeing anything here for PS4. It's kind of unclear if this could also translate over to the PS4 as well. The idea is that you would restore a backup file that has the exploit already set up and the YouTube application installed. So you would restore that backup and then launch it and you would have the user land exploit all ready to go. So there isn't really any point in trying to load the YouTube application onto your PS5 at the moment until we actually have some kind of exploit that is packaged into a backup file that we can restore onto the console because you'd have to restore the backup wiping what's on your console already. So preloading any of these media apps onto your console right now isn't really going to make much difference. We also got the release of part three to OSM's retail kit series. So this is the process that OSM has been documenting of trying to convert a retail console into more of a dev kit or unlock specific dev kit features that lie dormant on retails but can be reactivated. And that is what has been documented here. So part three covers the DECI daemon, which is described by OSM as the bridge between the PS4 and Sony's debugging tools, which handles all communication with the host machine over a network connection though also possible through a USB device and powers tools like Neighborhood and Sony's own debugger. So allowing you to essentially remotely connect Sony's own debugging tools for test kits and dev kits to a retail console. And that is what has been documented here in this write-up. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description. The end result as shared here by OSM showing that DECI does work on retail environments up to firmware 12.02, but likely up to the current firmwares on the PS4 as well. You can see a screenshot shared where he's been able to successfully connect the PS4 neighborhood software to his retail console. And it appears as though it is a development kit or test kit console. It does allow him to connect and access the neighborhood features, kind of similar to the idea on PS3 of going from a Kex to a Dex or on an Xbox 360 where you could take like a JTAG or RGH and and flash like a dev kit NAND like RG Loader onto it. It's kind of that similar idea of unlocking these dev kit features on retail consoles. So it's unclear if there's going to be more added to this write-up and maybe once it's complete we might see some kind of release that we can apply to our own retail consoles to unlock some of this development kit features. Also for the PS4 and PS5 we're seeing that the Los Santos Online private server for allowing you to play GTA 5 online on a jailbroken PS4 or PS5 is becoming free to play. So the developer Jarby posted on the official Discord saying that it's been a year and things are finally becoming feature complete. In about three hours, I will enter into a maintenance to upgrade the servers to a brand new version of the backend. With that will come many new features. After the migration, I will start to enable the new features one by one for you guys to try out. Oh, and LSO is becoming free, donations only forever. Thanks for all the support over the past year and it'll only be getting better. I did a video showing the installation of this and getting the private server running on a jailbroken PS4 and PS5. It's mainly just designed for PS4s, but it does work on the PS5. If you run the PS4 version of the game on your jailbroken PS5, it will work. So I'll leave a link to that video down in the description. But the big complaint I saw from comments on that video was the fact that they had to pay, you know, $35 for a lifetime or the monthly payment. And the player base was limited due to having to pay for access. Whereas if it becomes free to play, that should bring in a lot more players and it will be more like the official GTA Online type experience that you would get uh, with more players in your games. So it's good to finally see this become free to play. It also supports the Xbox 360 and apparently it's coming to PC and Xbox One as well. So now let's move on to some PlayStation 5 developments. So the big thing that has been plastered all over Twitter and X over the past few days is this from Slayer's Govi saying that they may look into the PlayStation 5 fake packages. 
which would be great to have another highly accomplished developer actually looking into this. Obviously, Slayer's Govi is behind K-Stuff, the inception of K-Stuff that we're using to actually do pretty much anything on our PS5 with the jailbreak. We are using K-Stuff, which Slayer's Govi initially developed. Also porting a lot of the PS4 kernel exploits that the flow discovered on Hacker One and turning those into usable exploits for our retail consoles. So having an accomplished developer like this looking into PS5 fake packages could certainly accelerate things. So perhaps we might actually start to get somewhere now that Slayer's Govi is also going to look into it. But there's actually some other things that Slayer's Govi talked about regarding PS5 Linux that I thought were pretty interesting because of course Slayer's Govi has been the one trying to port Linux onto the PS5 for the past several months. So somebody asks, I want to know how PS5 Linux is progressing and also if the current method the devs are working on works on 6.02. And the response is that USB ports work and that is all. So no built-in hardware works at the moment, just the USB ports when booting into Linux. And what about booting into a BZ image? Apparently, yes, it is possible to boot into a BZ image. So Slayers has managed to actually get the PS5 to boot into a Linux kernel, into a BZ image, and get the USB ports functioning, but no other hardware is currently supported. Also saying that Slayers Govi is on 4.03 firmware, and it works with minor workarounds, and should be unpatched up to and including 6.xx. So I guess if you are waiting for Linux, you probably don't want to update past 6.xx firmware. So stay below 7.00 if you want access to Linux in the future. Now, it may end up being able to get ported to higher firmwares eventually. But, you know, obviously the lower the firmware, the better. Just make sure you're below 7.00 because it seems that uh, whatever Slayer's Govi is using to be able to load Linux uh, should be unpatched up to and including 6.xx firmwares. So anyway, I just thought that was something worth mentioning for anybody who is interested in Linux developments on the PS5. Now, there's been a few teasers that have been put out as well. Firstly, from Chameleon saying a little bit of gaming on the PS5, hashtag Gold Hen, showing Demon Souls running with the classic Gold Hen FPS overlay showing in the bottom left hand corner, which obviously indicates a version of Gold Hen running on the PS5, just like with the FPS counter that you see on the PS4 version of Gold Hen, showing that uh, they've got that far at least on a Gold Hen port for the PS5. But not to be outdone, of course, it looks like Lightning Mods has somewhat responded to this by showcasing the new FPS counter coming to the next version of ETA Hen, presumably the next official release 2.4b, most likely. So he says, here's a video of the ETA Hen FPS counter in action. I used a 2.0 USB cable, so you can see the stutters reflected in the FPS number. This may or may not be the final design I'm going with. I just want to share it with my followers who have been asking for it. So you can see the FPS counter showing there down in the bottom left hand corner. Now the reason for the stutters is not because the game typically runs bad. This is done deliberately by Lightning Mods by using an older USB 2 cable to create these low read and write speeds so that, when, so that when the game is streaming in assets, it is hitching and struggling to stream in those assets, creating these stutters that are reflected in the FPS numbers so that you can see the FPS is accurate so it's not just displaying a static FPS value. So that is pretty cool there. And it'll be nice to see, I'm presuming that he will add the ability to move it to like the, the top right, the top left, the bottom right. Uh, probably within the settings menu, you'll have an option for the FPS or overlays where you'll be able to move it to different parts of the screen, maybe even make it larger or smaller. So we get to see both FPS implementations, one from Lightning Mods, and then also uh, the one from Sistro for Gold Hen. For PS5 which of course is still in private at the moment and not released yet but uh, obviously this version of ETA Hen is also still to be released because the current version does not yet include this FPS counter but anyway that's going to do it for this one so hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful if you did